Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen Team, and in today's video, we're gonna be creating this simple recipe template, but it has a neat bit of functionality down here, which is this checklist. Now, this checklist is based on an advanced custom fields repeater, but the checking and unchecking functionality is all just HTML and CSS. So we're gonna build these things out in Oxygen. So let's take a look on the back end and see what we have going on. First, you're gonna need Oxygen, of course, custom post type UI, which is free. And then for the repeater field, it requires Advanced Custom Fields Pro. So you'll have to have the pro version of Advanced Custom Fields to implement this. I've already set up a custom post type called Recipe, and I've created one recipe so far. And if we take a look here, we can see how the repeater is set up. Basically, we have title, content, and then down below the oxygen meta box, we have a repeater, which is just a list of simple text fields. Now, an important thing to know about this checklist we're creating is it's not saving the checked state. That can be done, but requires a bit of JavaScript, which I want to avoid for this video. So to get started, all we need to do is jump over to oxygen templates, and we're going to add a new template. So we're just gonna call this recipe template, and we're going to go down to where does this template apply and singular, and we're gonna look for our custom post type, which is recipes. And then I'm gonna bump up the template priority a bit on this one, because I already have that test run template that I showed you before, and we wanna make sure we override that. So now we can go ahead and jump in and edit this with oxygen. So to get started, the first thing we wanna do is add our cool little shape divider effect at the very top of this template. So we're gonna add a section and we're gonna set the background to a pattern. So let's browse and pick this pattern that I picked up from subtlepatterns.com. And for backgrounds like this, where the image is small and you need it to be repeated on the X and Y axis, you can just change the background size to auto. Now we need to add a shape divider to this section. So we'll go to primary and click add shape divider. And we want this divider to be white, so let's change the color to white. And I kind of like this wavy look. We're just gonna change the height of the waviness here to something like 120 pixels or so. Now we need another section. This is where all our content and stuff is gonna live. So let's drop in an image and grab the featured image from this post. So we're gonna go to data and then choose featured image and then for size, probably medium large because we're not gonna make it full width or anything like that. Now, one thing I do wanna do is give it some rounded corners. So what I'm gonna do is create a class called rounded and that will just be a utility class that has borders, border radius of something like 12 pixels. And then let's go to advanced and let's lock that selector. Now let's select the image ID again, and let's select this section and center everything horizontally. Now another thing I wanna do is have this image kinda of overlay this shape divider here. So let's reduce the top padding on this section, and then let's add a negative top margin to the image. So we'll select the image and go to advanced size and spacing and set a negative top margin of something like 128 pixels. Now, if we want more of this pattern visible, we can add some padding up here. I think that looks reasonably good, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to adding the title. So we'll add a heading, and on a normal site, you would already probably have an H1, so you might wanna set this to H2. Just make sure you don't have multiple H1s on a page. But for this context, since I don't already have an H1, I'm gonna set it to an H1. And then I'm gonna go ahead and insert some data here and choose the title of the post. So now you can see that we have the best cookies ever made, maybe, as a title. So let's add some margin below this image. We'll select it and go to Advanced Size and Spacing and add 32 pixels of margin below it. And now we can go below the title, but first let's add some margin there too, 32 pixels there. And then we can add a text element and we're gonna insert the content of our recipe post. So we'll double click, insert data and choose content. Now this is a bit wide and it's all the text is centered, which I don't like. So we're gonna adjust that up a bit. What I usually like to do to make things more narrow is add a class called narrow, which I believe I've already set up on this site. I do have the class, but none of the styles are there. So usually what I'll do is go to advanced size and spacing and set the max width to whatever width I want it to be on a desktop screen. So usually something like 992 pixels or 768, that looks pretty good. 
And then for width, I just set it to 100%. And that allows it to scale as you narrow the viewport width. So we've got responsiveness baked into the styles. Now I wanna to go to the ID of the element since narrow is a utility class, let's lock that. And then let's go to the ID of this text element and go to typography and align all the text to the left. Perfect, now let's go to advanced size and spacing and add 64 pixels of margin below that. The next thing we need to do is add our little recipe list, our checklist. So we're going to add a div. Now let's give it a class of checklist wrap. And let's give it that rounded class too, because I want it to have the border radius. Now let's go back to the checklist wrap class, and we're gonna set the background image to the same thing we used for the header to add some design interest here, and set the background size to cover. And then let's go to advanced size and spacing and add 32 pixels of padding all the way around. Now we're gonna add some text here that says ingredients list. So let's do ingredients list. And let's set it to white and a heavier weight like 600. Now we need to get into doing our repeater stuff. So we're gonna add a repeater and we're gonna go to query and we're gonna use the ACF repeater option here and then choose the recipe ingredients field. Then click apply query params and we're gonna get a list of items here. So the first thing we can do is we can drop in some text which is just gonna be the ingredient text so let's double click that insert data and go to repeater field and choose ingredient now we're also going to want to adjust the typography of this so let's go to advanced typography the color is okay but i would like a heavier font weight so let's go to 600 or so and let's change the font size to 18 pixels and let's give this a class of checklist wrap ingredient title now we're gonna do something really tricky here. We're gonna add a div, and let's go ahead and move it to the left of the ingredient title. And let's give it a class of checklist wrap checkbox. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this custom tag option. So let's check use custom tag, and let's change the tag to input. And then under advanced attributes, we're gonna add a type attribute of checkbox. So this makes this literally into a checkbox. Let's apply that attribute because right now it's a text box. So now you can see it's actually a checkbox. Now it's going to look a little wonky in the builder, but that's okay. It'll look fine on the front end. Oxygen just imposes an 80 by 80 pixel width and height for divs. So it's going to look a little bigger than it actually is. And speaking of how big it is, let's change it to 24 pixels by 24 pixels. And if we wanna bypass that min width and min height, we can go back to the ID and change the min width here to zero pixels and the min height to zero pixels. That way it'll actually reflect the size. So let's go back to our class. Everything looks good, except for we do need some margin on the right-hand side, so let's add 16 pixels. And then let's select the repeater div and make sure everything's laid out horizontally and centered vertically and aligned to the left. So now we have our nice little checkbox here. I also might want some spacing between these items. So the best way to do that probably is just add some padding. So let's add four pixels on the top and the bottom. And then we don't really need any on the left and right. The other thing we could do here is we could add the narrow class to this checklist. Let's see what that looks like. That doesn't look too bad, so we'll probably leave it. Let's select the checklist here and let's center everything. So our ingredients list is right in the middle. And then let's increase the font size to 32 pixels. And finally, let's add some margin below that. So now we have this ingredients list and it should be nice and responsive as we step down. It will respect the size of the viewport. Now for the fancy bits. So this is pulling the data from the repeater, which you saw was very easy because of Oxygen's advanced custom fields integration. But we want this label to get a strike through style when we check the box. Now your initial instinct might be to go to JavaScript, but we don't have to do that here. So we're gonna add a style sheet, manage style sheets, and then we're gonna add a new style sheet. We're gonna call this checklist. And then before we start writing, I do wanna reference the classes that we use. So let's go to manage selectors and take a look at those. So we have checklist-wrap, checklist-wrap, underscore underscore ingredient dash title and checklist 
dash wrap underscore underscore checkbox. So these are the two that we need. So we should be able to remember those. Let's go back to our style sheets, manage style sheets and open up checklist. So checklist dash wrap underscore underscore checkbox. And let's test the selector display none. And let's add an important to make sure that we're not getting overridden by something. So we know we're applying to the proper selector here because that disappeared. Now what we wanna do is select the element after it. So we can either use a wild card, but since we know what the class of the element after it is, we can just target that directly. So it's checklist dash wrap underscore underscore ingredient title, I believe, yeah. So you can see those titles disappeared. Now what we wanna do is we wanna affect the styling of this, but only when one of these check boxes is checked. So there is a pseudo selector for that, which is colon checked. So now this style will only apply when one of these boxes is checked. Let's go ahead and check a box and you can see that the text disappears, but we don't want it to disappear. We want it to get a line through it. So we're gonna set text decoration line through. And now we can save that and we're gonna be brave and not even test it in the builder. We're just gonna to jump to the front end. And you can see here that we have our layout and then we have one little visual glitch there and that is probably a Z index issue. So let's first make sure our section isn't set to overflow hidden. So under layout, our overflow should be visible and it is. Now we just need to raise the Z index of this image. So let's go to advanced layout and set a Z index of like 100 or so. And let's refresh on the front end and that issue should be resolved. There we go. Now we have our nice overlay with our wavy patterned background there. And as we scroll down, we have our ingredients list. Now, if we check one of these, we get a strike through on the ingredient name. So I have seen this on other sites, especially cooking sites, of course. And it's actually super useful when you have a recipe on your phone and you're working through it to be able to just tick those items off so that you can keep track. The only way that I would probably improve this if I had a little bit more time is I might add some JavaScript to save the checked state in local storage so that if somebody accidentally refreshed or something, they could come back and still have their progress. Now, the only downside of that is if they're coming back to the recipe to do it again, they would then have to uncheck all the items. So then you have to add a button to uncheck or check them all. And it just gets a little bit more complicated. So today we're just addressing this simple implementation. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that's how to create a simple recipe template with an interactive checklist of ingredients. Thank you very much for watching.